Hello guys, good morning and welcome to my garden. It is pretty early, it's currently 6.30 in the morning. I have not filmed a video this early since probably this time last year. So luckily enough for me, me filming videos keeps me accountable. And if I wasn't planning on filming this morning, honestly, I probably would have just continued to sleep in. I really gotta get my butt in gear at least once a week to start doing early morning harvest because my cucumbers are like right on that edge where they're going to be starting to really go here in a week. Same with different herbs and peppers and other things like that. So I have to start implementing uh, waking up early at least once a week. So if you don't know, I kind of touched on this in my last video, I believe. So when it comes to harvesting, nine times out of 10, morning is best, but there are a handful of things I like to pick in the evening, like tomatoes. But typically, if you want to steer clear of any type of problems, morning is best before the sun hits it and the warmth of the day. I mean, you want the crispest vegetable possible. The reason why I wait to do my tomatoes for the most part is because that heat of the day really condenses those sugars. And then um, also the soil can dry out, equaling out to be a better flavor. So I've always harvested my tomatoes more in the evening, but typically everything else more in the morning. And that just seems to work best for me. But here, I'm here just to talk all things garden this morning. So I actually started to run into my vine borer problem this week. I actually was curious on when I ran into this problem last year, exact same week as last year. So in last year's video, when I talked about vine borer taking out my zucchini, I had 104 days roughly left of my growing season. And when this happened, I think it was on Saturday, I had 103-ish days left. So if you don't know, pumpkins typically take like 110, 115 days. I had to pull out my pumpkin, which is really sad because they were on the second and third tier of the pumpkin trellis I made. But one thing I have noticed is if I want to keep a vining crop, it's almost smart for me to not start that crop until June. Um, I've noticed, especially with last year, so last year I built this insect knit hoop house and I went ahead and planted my zucchini, but I didn't have the insect netting up before that started to flower. I ended up getting the netting up and within like a week, I ended up having vine borer. So I currently do not have a problem with my zucchini and the insect netted hoop. It just seems to do really well. I did um, plant things like nasturtiums and stuff to kind of help with this problem around the area, but it didn't really seem to work. They still found it. So if you're not familiar with vine borer or squash bugs, typically what they do is they lay their larva and they will just eat out the vine and continue to eat out the vine. And it's very disgusting. Um, I actually took a video of what the base of that tomato plant looked like before I pulled it out. So I will make sure I put it across the screen. So anyway, back to the whole like hundred and something days. So technically I wouldn't have enough time to plant my pumpkins again. But that's kind of when it's average for your har harvest time. So my pumpkins said they take about 110 days. I roughly had 103 when I replanted them. That's a week difference. And in reality, when you're dealing with expectant frost dates, they can be all over the place. I remember last year, I don't think we got ours until the third or fourth week of October. But even then, if you have stuff to cover your plants, honestly, you were going to be fine. So here in like two or three weeks time, you'll probably notice me starting some of my fall crops. And what I'm going to be doing with my fall crops this year is I'm going to be leaving them in the ground over winter pretty much the entire winter. I'm able to do that because I have solar plastic and um, hoops. So we are going to be implementing that even more this year. Last year was my very first fall garden. So I experimented a lot and I learned a lot and I have a really good idea moving forward. But years like to come, I honestly don't think I'm going to be planting mini brassicas out in spring. I'm not going to be planting anything like pumpkin or zucchini until about end of June just because I've really noticed how pests are throughout my season now that this is my fourth year really going deep into gardening. Then I've been running into a fun problem of squirrels and birds, which this year has been intense with. <laughs> the other morning I was outside and I brought my cat out and I just kept hearing this noise and my cat was just not having it and she ended up running back inside, which is very abnormal because she's not an outside cat. So if she gets any time outside, it's pretty much like 
yes. But I kept hearing this like scurrying noise in my strawberry beds. And in my strawberry beds, I have um, like a little, what's that called? It's cage. I have like cages above my strawberries, which clearly is not helping. So I like walked over and I had no idea what it potentially be. A squirrel was stuck in the cage by trying to get a strawberry. So I have only gotten one strawberry. These beds that I have on my fence, I thought were going to be such a good idea, but honestly, I think it's just more of the squirrel's favorite place to pick food because they typically run off the moment they see me. So I have been dealing with this one squirrel and this one squirrel is not scared of me. So even last night, he maybe got like a foot from me and was just wondering if I was going to move or watch him while he was going to try to steal one of my tomatoes. So I believe it's squirrels and birds. I really thought it was just squirrels there for a while, but then the other day I was pruning off peppers and out of nowhere a tomato fell from the sky. <laughs> and fell right in front of me and it was a bird eating the tomato so one thing i did last night because one thing they they are doing especially is they are grabbing a lot of my sand morzanos and i think it's just because it's an easier visual the determinants they're so bushy and they're a little bit harder to see but with the indeterminants i have them pruned back so much that it's really just you see the fruit very easily and they are just attacking any tomato that has any bit of red on it. So last night, just to be safe, because they literally just keep stealing all of my San Morzanos, I picked all of the semi-ripe San Morzanos to at least, hopefully that will steer them because those ones are very close to the ground. They're maybe like a foot or two off the ground. So I'm hoping that once these grow up, maybe I won't have as much of a problem, but I don't know. I don't know. They do say that you should plant enough for the surrounding wildlife. But I will say, I think they've already gotten 10 tomatoes from me and that's 10 too many. Ooh, I did read last night. Um, I was scrolling through some of my Facebook garden groups I had and people suggested uh, sprinkling cayenne pepper all over the area if you're having problems with squirrels or any type of like small little rodent. So let me know if you've ever tried that and if it worked and if you have any other like deterring methods, please let me know. I did go ahead and lay um, two of my fake owls and a fake snake over there. So I have fake snakes and owls throughout the garden, but since this year, my garden is so big, I don't think it's enough. I think I have three owls and a handful of snakes, but those do seem to help, but I just think I need more. That's pretty much the gist though of things that have gone on this week that I haven't filmed with you guys. Um, the garden is massive and there are times where I look at it and I'm like, man, I really wish I could still be doing more than I am. But I do know that what I want to accomplish, I can't accomplish here. Um, I want to be doing like three to four times the amount I'm currently doing. And the one reason why the tomato thing is just so annoying to me is because the one goal I do have is to try to make a year's worth of tomato sauce, which I really don't know if I'm going to get there this year or not. Last year, I think I roughly was able to make like six months worth. So I'm hoping to at least get like eight to nine months worth this year. I have planted a few more tomatoes out, so I should be getting multiple harvests of tomatoes. So that's another thing. If you don't secession sow in your garden, definitely do so. Um, you have plenty of time for the most part. Even if you're in a shorter zone, you probably still have... 60 days or something like that and you can still do a ton of beans you can grow a whole trellis of beans in 60 days you can grow lettuce in 60 days you can grow beets radishes uh there's lots of different varieties so just take a look if you have plenty of time really get out there start sowing seeds i mean use use your time and use your garden especially if you're starting to feel burnout so july is a big big month to start to feel this burnout. And I remember feeling it greatly in the first few years of gardening. You just put in so much work when it comes to the garden and you do reach a point of burnout. But for some reason, these last two years, I really haven't reached that point. I think I just know what needs to be done and I just get over that hump of not really wanting to go ahead and do any garden things. And that's one reason why I plant a fall garden now. The fall garden is so nice guys so if you are like over the heat and you're done and you're just like screw this plant yourself a fall garden believe me the pest 
are nothing like summer pests. Like I don't even, re what I, I had to deal with a little bit of cabbage worms, but that was simply because I didn't put any insect netting over anything and I planted a ton of brassicas. But other than that, I didn't deal with a single pest I had to deal with. The pests were pretty much done by beginning of October to where you really didn't have to do anything else. Um, fall gardens to me are so nice. They're so simple and the weather gets cooler. You want to be out in your garden more. Definitely start to plan that out if you haven't, believe me. You will enjoy it. I actually didn't expect myself to enjoy it as much as I did last year, but I will forever have a fall garden. I just really love it. And going back on the subject of feeling burnout, make sure you're spending time in your garden where you're not just working. Um, make this place a place that's your favorite. Um, which it's hard to make a place your favorite when all you're doing is put in work. But hopefully you can see this work and in moments like this you can appreciate it. Because I know I just highly enjoy sitting back, especially in July and just looking at the garden. Like I used to hate the month of July guys. I hated midsummer even though I'm a hot natured girl. That hot humid weather has just never been my thing. But now I get really sad for summer to end because I know this beauty is going to be gone here in just a few months. And I worked six months to get it to this point. But either way, um, I think that's enough rambling for now. I do want to show you guys a few of my favorite spots in the garden and just kind of show you guys throughout. Next. The sun is starting to poke through the trees just a little bit. Okay, so first off, one of my favorite angles of the garden is like right here, where you kind of get a touch of this big sunflower, but then you see the trellis and all the other big sunflowers. Look how big that guy's gotten. These did start to form their flowers, so I bet they will start to get some flowers on them soon. I really want to measure how tall this is. I'm I'm thinking it's at least 10 and a half, 11 feet right now. But here over here, you can see my pumpkins are officially gone, but the broccoli plant is almost ready to harvest and get some of those seeds out. I just need to wait a itty bit more since we had all of that rain last week. Uh, it just needs to dry out a little bit, but we're getting really, really close. And I'm really, really excited about that. And that is actually a good point. So when it comes to my pumpkins, I was spraying them with neem oil and we were completely fine until I got that week's worth of rain. After that week's worth of rain, I did have a handful of problems because if you do any type of like neem or you can see here, I have some diatomaceous earth that doesn't work when it rains. It just runs off the plant. And then, I mean, when you have a week worth of not being able to do any type of pest control, you're gonna lose a few plants. We do have a ton of sunflowers though over here opening. We have that little guy. This one has like a multi head going on. Same with this one here. Ooh, 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 ooh. I ran into a spider. That is one thing. So with having these trellises and everything, I've been running into a ton of spider webs. Okay, back to the sunflower. Look how beautiful that guy is. Let me just start to get this one to bloom, which how pretty it has like those little water droplets. That guy's blooming. He's a pretty one too. And then I still only have one of my goldie honey bears that's blooming. But how cool is that sunflower? a pretty one as well. I am getting a few bell peppers finally and all of my peppers are looking so much better guys. Like I'm not going to show you the entire garden because we have a garden tour coming soon enough but you guys see all that? It looks good. So over here with my tomatoes you can see that little owl and snake. I put those two right there because they stole all of my San Morzanos from this. So you can see I do have some low hanging fruit still. But see how easy that would be just for them to come up and grab versus like white indeterminates that just have a ton of fruit everywhere, which my aromas look so good. Ignore the weeds. So the other day, me and my husband were outside and I was walking behind these tomatoes and I found one of my new favorite views of the garden, which is right here. 
how pretty is that? It just reminds me of like this hidden forest, even though I'm in the middle of the city. How beautiful is this little view? And look at these tomatoes, guys. <laughs> these tomatoes are literally insanely massive. So the other night I was on a ladder tying up the newest string for the four to weave. And honestly, I don't know how tall I'm gonna let these go. There's really not much more I can do other than maybe like one more round. So this is my first year with indeterminates. If you know of a situation or an idea of what I could do further or if I should just top the plants once I get to that certain height, let me know because I do need to look that up. I keep forgetting. So this is kind of a mental note for myself to remember. But look guys, these trellises over here are starting to get full and we are going to be picking a cucumber or two in just a few days, which is very exciting. And we're also starting to get our first red paprikas. So I plan on making a bunch of paprika powder. And this is one reason why I woke up early this morning so I could harvest these red ones. Oh shit. That was, this is why you guys get pruners and not just rip that off like I did. <laughs> Whoops. Much better. Oh, looks like I have a red jalapeno as well. So fun fact, before I started gardening anything, um, I had no idea that jalapenos actually turn red at their most mature stage. And this is actually what they make uh, sriracha out of, I believe. Cool, huh? And last update I really wanted to show you guys was the sunflowers. So I mentioned this in my last video that I put a wine bottle and one of my terracotta steaks over here. And this sunflower, guys, look at the base of that. It's insane. This is definitely going to be my biggest sunflower in the garden. The leaves are twice the size of any other sunflower I have. And these two were actually planted at the exact same time. And there is significant height difference on them now. And you can just tell. It's literally crazy. So that is so cool. I have these terracotta stakes over on the trellis area of my cucumbers and also right over there with my zucchini. And I really like them. It's like a cheap little eight pack you can get. And if you drink wine or beer or any type of like long necked bottle, you can use it. Well guys, I do think that's going to conclude it for me today. I just wanted to have a simple, honest garden talk with you guys since it's been quite some time since I've just sat down and talked garden things with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this more simplistic style of video. Um, I'm sure there'll be more to come throughout the season as I talk about all things going on, but I'll see you guys all next week. Bye.